Hello again, folks, and welcome back to Let's Play Salasta, Crown of the Magister. I'm your host, Kimmy Darius. Last we left off, I had made a team of adventurers. Uh, available characters, cool. And had pretty much made it so as it is based entirely off of my current D&D party's team of characters. With one exemption, uh, not a fifth character which is saddening and don't have dragonborn or tiefling so I couldn't make Rom into the tiefling he's supposed to be put that out of the way I have managed to make four of the five team, team members we have Iggy the human cleric of the battle we have Rom the rogue uh rogue yes uh, Doolin, the dexterous rapier using fighter, and Leaf, the full blooded sylvan elf cleric of fire. I'm so ready for this. Pro tip, by the way, if you decide to use cups, um, get a coaster for your desk. Holy shit, condensation's a thing. Ah, uh, so can't wait, so can't wait! Load faster. I wonder how much of a loading screen this is gonna be. The the loading into the game itself took at least a minute. I'm really hoping that's not the case here. Loading, loading, loading. There we go. Press start. Before the cataclysm, there were no gods on Celasta. No humans, either. Then, the rift opened. Some say it was a magical accident. Or the work of an evil god. No one knows for sure. The Cataclysm destroyed the old High Elf Empire. Manakalan, they called it twisted the land beyond recognition. Now, only the brave and the foolish go there, in search of ancient treasures. But something is happening deep in those badlands. Whatever it is, it can't be good. They're saying all was well, and then humans happened. 1024 AC, it is time to political attention between the Principality of Ma Masgarth and its neighbors. The Legacy Council stands as a neutral organization with representat representatives from all the Eastern Kingdoms. It has issued a call for hired adventurers to bolster its efforts to explore the perilous badlands. A valiant group gathers at the Grave Keep's Cask Inn. Ready. To take up the challenge. I think they're talking about us. This beer tastes like donkey piss. Not that I'm complaining. Hope I'm not too late. Ran into a bit of trouble on the way here. Take a load off. There's plenty of donkey piss to go around. You're not too late, friend. We're all here for the same reason. Grab a chair. Another round, barkeep. Four of your finest flagons of donkey piss, please. Looks like you've been waiting here a while. We do what we have to do. So, um, what's this trouble you were telling us about? Well, I was making my way here when three bandits leapt from the bushes with crossbows. They dragged me off to some decrepit prison and tossed me in a filthy cell that smelled of rat piss. Don't know what was holding the place up. Oh, so they select a character for kind of a tutorial thing. I dig this. Select the character by cl clicking on the character in the 3D view or in the character's portrait. To select the whole party, use the select all party button. Uh, drag a rectangle, select the uh, character's... Uh, left click on the destination. Yep. 
Right click and drag to rotate the camera. You can also rotate using the buttons on the compass or at the bottom right of the screen. Or yeah. Use Waz or the arrow keys to move the camera around. Hold down W while focusing on the characters, zoom in on them. Oh, this is cool. All right, first off, I want to see whether or not there's a uh, quick save button. <laughs> Let's see, dice. Oh, yeah, I love this. Oh no, they don't get the cool dice. Actually, do they have orange? Orange is my favorite color. Damn it. Acid die, bludgeoning die, cold die. Oh, they have ones for different colors based on the damage you do. Keyboard, quick save, F5. Or F9 to quick load. All right. Boop. Yeah. Click on the journal button to open the quest log. This will give you more information on your current objectives along with some useful context. Note that the journal contains much more information than the quest log. The log lists your current objective, which must, which you must complete in order to move the quest forward, may also have other optional objectives. The log also gives you hints and context to help you understand the subtleties of your quest. Your success and failures are all recorded here. Okay, so I can press that to pause in general. Uh, so, logs, journal, button. It tastes like donkey piss. Okay, so log is to go through the entirety of your dialogue you've had throughout the days. Find a way out. There must be a way out of this crumbling prison. The bandits left you in a ruined cell. There must be a weak wall or a hole somewhere to, in one of the other walls. Okay. All right, I'm kind of pumped for this. So Q and E allow me to rotate, which is fantastic. Scroll through a hole, click on the other side. You can get a better view of other side by rotating the camera. Use Q and E or move, yep. Character will automatically kneel, crawl, and stand up as appropriate on the way to the desired location. They will also jump, as uh, I saw in the demo. After moving the camera to examine your surroundings, you can center on the character and follow them. Either double click the character's portrait or press tab while controlling this character. Okay, I didn't know about the tab part. Actually, I should probably be being cautious here. Just in case. Might be other characters. Maybe I can uh, get a little bit of a drop in on them, you know? Not the door. Leaf should be a pretty proficient um, stealther. Not that she has proficiency in stealth, but she does have a load of decks. So, ooh, hello. Highlighted elements are interactive. Cur cursor indicates the action that can be performed: opening, pushing, activating, lock picking, etc. If an action requires a die roll, the difficulty class will be displayed. Hmm. Kind of curious as to what's on the other side of these doors, but. Dina's, I don't have. Does she have a light spell? That's right, I didn't give her the light spell. I'm probably going to climb up this way. And then jump over here, get what's in this chest. To jump or climb, simply click on the destination. Depending on the character's strength and proficiency with athletics, you can jump and climb between two and five cells. You can always jump over two cells, drop down three cells, climb up one cell, or climb up easy surfaces like ladders or ropes without any trouble. Above, a character with a strength of 15, the strength below 15 and no proficiency in athletics cannot jump far enough to reach the chest. Below, a fighter with a strength 15 to 20 can jump across three cells. 
So can a character with strength 11 and 14 plus proficiency in athletics. In general, the critical path is always open to characters without superior physical abilities. However, optional loot is sometimes harder to reach. Don't give up though. You may find another way to get the chest. So can I... Okay. Yeah, she's got a strength of something. No, oh, that's spells. What is... That's the... Oh, there's a bestiary? Oh, sweet. Anyways. I see the character. I want to see... Yeah, she's got a strength of 13, so... Not sure she'll be able to make this jump. Okay, failure, so she was stunned for a little bit. Alright, what do we get? Potion of healing. That'll make it so as she can heal 1d8 hit points. A path to destination. Oh, I see. There's probably could have been an alternate path where she could have pushed open that instead. I wonder if there's a chance of instant death here. <laughs> I'll click to examine. Oh, heard that. Hmm. Click to push. Ah, because that's not cause a calamity or anything. Hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be the way out then. It's a slow start, but you know, Uba tutorials. Well, uh, it's mostly unintentional. Happy little accidents, looting and inventory management. Uh, click it on a chest or other container to loot it. Everything you carry affects your weight gauge, so be wary of reaching your weight limit as this will slow you down a lot. Equipment and light sources must be placed in the appropriate slots before they can be used. Some items can stack at the same cell as in your inventory. The maximum number of units depends on the item. To split a stack of items, drag and drop the shaft, shaft stack into an empty cell before or while holding down the shift key. This will take one unit from the stack. Mm. Actually, that's good to know. Use shift. Alright. And that is... SP. There's like one gold. Three rations. Eight arrows. Yep, that's good. Yeah, I got all my equipment. Now, if only there was a way to... Loot the people that we just totally crushed. I guess I don't have to be that cautious anymore. Movement tutorials done. Nice move that trick with the wall. Glad you know worse for wear. Perhaps someone else can tell a story since it looks like we might be here a while. Have another rail. It's not like you have anywhere better to be. I have a tale to tell as well. I too was attacked, but I put an end to my enemies with blood and pain. So, what are you waiting for? Spit it out, why don't you? The battle starts. Moving into a point in the yellow area uses your main action to dash. Dash doubles your uh, maximum movement for the turn. However, you cannot use your action to attack or cast a spell after. Remember that you can move normally and then decide whether to dash further or to use your action for something else. So we're here. You got a couple of wolves. He's got a nice rapier. Let's see. AC of 11. Man, he's got a good shot to hit him then. Ha! You're not coming back. Case in point. 
Now, I believe... Second one, now. Nah. They don't get action search just yet. Oh, surrounded by wolves, I see. So he had used double action. Uh, you, yeah, the wolf had used its dash action. That's why it couldn't attack me. You attack enemy using your default weapon, mouse over it, and then left click. You can also cast an, an attack spell or switch weapon configurations and use another weapon, a ranged one, for example. Depending on the character, some special abilities are also available. You try. You can try to shove an enemy back or down. Select shove and choose from the available options. If you shove an enemy backwards into a pit, they'll fall. If you shove an enemy down, they'll be prone, remain vulnerable until they spend move points to stand up. Which, if I recollect, it's half movement in 5th edition in order to uh, stand up. Yeah. I love that they showed the die rolls. It's awesome. Love it. Click and dodge using your main action and uses your main action provides the following benefits. Until the start of your next turn, all attackers you can see have disadvantage on their rolls to hit, and you have advantage on dexterity saving throws. That is important. Like, say you spend a turn and do nothing of any sort of intrinsic value. You could just then dodge in order to make sure that you do. I'm gonna try to shove it. Uh, push away. <laughs> I probably should feel bad, bad about that. <sighs> My lord, that was rough. Eh, rough. Wolves. More wolves. To avoid an opportunity attack, you can use the disengage action. For the rest of your turn, you can move close to enemies freely without any risk of opportunity attacks. Disengage uses your main action though, so you won't be able to attack or dash during this turn. Or, hear me out, I could stab it. Oh, this is the Greyback. Oh, he's got 50 HP. This could hurt. Hmm. Wonder. Wonder how much damage being able to hit it would be. Oh, and I am effectively pinned in here. Unless I jump here, which will cause an attack of opportunity. Alright, let's disengage then. Move over here. See if... Oh. I just said move over there. Not push the rock down yet. What a bunch of namby pammies. You're lucky you weren't attacked by Sorax. Shut your gob or I'll shut it for you. The Badlands are thick with them. Shape-shifting bastards. Everyone's a critic. Aren't all drunks basically stupid? Sorax might be legend, but orcs are quite real, and not just in the Badlands. I stumbled across a secret settlement right here in the Principality. Bullshit. High in the hills, two days west of here, I left the main road to find a shorter way through, and I was making good time when I dropped through a sodding sinkhole into a cave. Oh. I must have fallen on my wrong side. You know, I won't lie. I really dig that this is how they do the tutorial. They just go character by character and be all like, yeah, this is what we went through. It's lost that you will explore deep, dark places without natural light sources. It makes exploration and combat harder, especially for characters without dark vision. You can equip torches or cast light spells to reveal your environment for the whole group. You can light flammable items like torches on holders by inter interacting with them while holding a torch or by casting a flaming spell on them like the Cantrip Firebolt. In our case though, we're going to cast this spell on our mace. Now we have a light source. Ooh, that's uh... 
That's a dangerous looking situation here. Need a flaming item. I got a light spell. Let's complete a quest before opening this door. Oh, is it, is it gonna require me to use an item? Light a torch? I don't have a torch. That's food. Handle. Uh, Light is with us. Okay. Now I can leave the cave or examine the totem. Okay, that's neat. Oh, examine the totem. Examine the totem, damn it, Iggy. Orcs here. I must report this, which means I must get out of here alive. Oh, I saw that intelligence history check. Was Ziggy even good at history? I knew I took religion. Damn it, not having C as the uh, thing, character proficiencies. It might have been a plot. It might have been just a thing. Yeah, plus two. Might have been just a thing where it was like, oh, hey, you succeeded because tutorial. Your character can cast healing spells like a cleric, for instance. Press the cast button and select a spell in order to recover lost hit points. You can also use a potion found in nearby loot. Open the inventory and right click on the potion to use it. Uh, oh, I'm actually, I actually am injured. Uh, for the most part, I will typically prefer to use healing spells before I use potions. After all, potions cost money. And are a valuable resource. Let's see, some arrows, a torch, a potion of healing. Quick check over the corner here. There they are. If they see me, I'm dead. That's why characters tend to quick save. Activating caution makes you slower, but grants two benefits. Hidden objects and traps are easier to find, and you are harder to for enemies to spot. When an enemy starts to notice your presence, a gauge appears above their head, giving you time to react and return to hiding. Remain three cells above the enemy in this mode, and you can't be detected. Oh, okay. That, that's harkening back to some sort of psychological thing where it's like uh, most people will ignore, will not actually look up any more than 45 degrees because it's a peripheral thing. So am I supposed to sneak sneak or can I actually... Hmm. See, in the core fifth ed, there is a thing where pretty much you, um, if you're wearing heavy armor, you have disadvantage on stealth checks. So, orcs are the big threat in this? Or big ish threat? Really quick. I just want to try something stupid. Oh. You've been detected? Ah, oh, man! Party had no way to revive their dead game over. Okay. So tutorial is tutorial. You can't just freely kill Will and Nilly at the orcs or whatnot. Ah, that kind of sucks. Oh well. Again, it's the tutorial. Imagine though if Iggy did take on three orcs on his own at first level. Good times. <clears throat> Good times.
That would be a pretty hard encounter, I think. Alright, so I think that, um... Yeah. I think that, uh... This is just how it's gonna be. I, I gotta tutorialize through first, so... Tutorial, tutorial... Where's the CR of an orc? I'm now thinking logistics wise. Alright, so I don't think I have to sneak anymore. Strength of 15. Certainly hope I can make that check. Do I have athletics? I do have athletics. Just went to cross the river. <clears throat> Again, Iggy's heavy ass armor has led him to more problems. <sighs> but it's it's got him out of quite a few problems though. So long rest, safe area. Oh yeah, I recall this from the. Uh, From the demo, long rests can be taken at certain areas. Worse, it looks like this is the only way out. I just need to be patient. They can't stay there forever. To recover hit points, special abilities, and spells, you must take a long rest. To do so, you need to gather a party around a safe place and have one ration of food per party member. Safe places are represented by a campfire. They are also known, shown on the location map. Many spellcasters know more spells than they can recall at a given time. Prepared spells, like, like clerics, ha clerics have, represent those a character can use by spending spell slots. Check your hero's list of known spells and choose which ones you want to prepare. Spells that are not prepared cannot be cast. Any characters know more spells than they can prepare, so choose carefully for the given situation. I gotta wait for the orcs to leave. Bell slots. And this will... So the way that uh, resting and short resting works in 5th edition is that um, short rests take one hour at minimum and you can restore your hit points using your hit die. So if you are like a third level cleric you can use two of those hit dice to recover after you've short rested. Um, some creatures and characters have different abilities that restore after a short rest, like a fighter's um, second wind, or a or in the same happenstance, their action surge ability. But most, for the most part, when it comes to spells, these only get uh, spell slots only get restored after a long rest so keep that in mind let's see shield of faith concentration concentration bane actually bane might be a good one to get I prepare spells you can only do this after a long rest okay uh that said though i am going to go ahead and call an episode here when we return can Iggy handle three orcs all on his own, or is he actually going to have to wait a nice long rest literally 20 feet away from them until they leave? Who knows? So thank you everyone so very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this series as much as I'm enjoying playing it. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Cheers.